Hi, this is Lindsay DeSwart. Welcome to the Magical Midlife Podcast. I'm delighted for you to be here with us today. And I am very delighted to share that Louise Eddington is our guest today. And Louise, I have to thank profusely because I've been listening to her podcast all the way through COVID and she has kept me inspired and uplifted um, to the to point people ask me like, what are you doing? What are you listening to? What are you reading? And Louise has actually been a great part of that. So welcome, Louise. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited that I inspired you to do a podcast too. So. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> So what I'd love to do, first of all, is to find out about you, because um, I know you've had some world travels and some adventures, um, to find out about you and obviously your journey to living the magical midlife, because that's what this is really all about. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to ask you stuff depending on what comes up with that. So let's go. Let's find out about Louise. What can you tell us? <laughs> well, I am in this incarnation an astrologer. But um, I am, oh, I'm 61 now, and I've lived in Canada, Connecticut, um, the UK where I was born, back and forth, Australia, and now I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, and we did have a six-month jaunt in Texas as well. <laughs> no, I mean, a traveller, for sure. So, um, yes, very much a traveller, but a traveller in many ways. You know, I've, um, I've had many um kind of roles and jobs and um and life stages so um i hope we can kind of cover it all uh but pr presently <laughs> well we've got I, an hour put it that way we've got an hour so let's go <laughs> presently yeah i'm a soul astrologer i'm the author of two books um, bestsellers i believe the, the second one is a bestseller it's number one on amazon the complete massive astrology yeah massive congratulations uh, thank you it's kind of in the top 500 of all books on amazon so that's pretty astounding for an astrology book and uh, modern astrology was my first book i'm equally proud of both of them but um the second one seems to have just caught a nerve uh, and taken off i'm also a trained shamanic practitioner i'm also trained in a few things <laughs> <laughs> um hypnotherapy is another one but i use that more as part of my group work so we'll talk about all that as we go through fantastic we have a lot in common we do i'm married have been with my husband since 1994 we married in 97 i've got two daughters um who are now adults just well the second one's about to be 21 and um we all live in utah so four animals two cats two dogs oh my goodness that's <laughs> all, uh, all rescues <laughs> oh really okay cool good for you yeah and did they rescue you or did you rescue them both <laughs> <laughs> it tends to work that way doesn't it yeah. yeah okay so let's wind it back so you were in england first of all and then what was your sort of your first i don't know career path shall we say Oh, well, I'm born, um, I was born into a very kind of working class background, really, um, kind of veering up to middle class, if you're talking UK terms, mm -hmm. and mainly through my dad's hard work. My, my grandparents, everybody was very working class, you know, tradies, uh, kind of things like that. And, um, but my dad was quite ambitious, but when I left school, my first job was actually as an audit clerk <laughs> at an accountant's office. Okay. <laughs> and then I worked in the water authority. So I was very much working in office jobs. I didn't go to yeah. college. Yeah. Didn't go to college right after school. And then um, in my mid-20s, my had, I'd been with this guy for three years and he broke up with me and I had that old heartbreak thing. And I decided that this was my chance though to kind of break free from this kind of middle class um, upbringing, mm -hmm. which um, had been interesting in itself, including six years in Northern Ireland during the Troubles, because my wow. dad wanted to move around a bit too. Okay. But anyway, okay. I took off um, after the breakup and became a nanny for five years, mm -hmm. a year in Canada, Saskatchewan, then four years in Connecticut. 
Then I moved back to England and decided to go to college and um, I, um, dis I got a first class honours degree because I was a, a, a swatty first class, uh, swatty mature student and loved every minute of studying. Mm -hmm. But then I met my husband and we got married, had children and um, I wanted to be at home with my children. So apart from a couple of part time jobs, I started to explore ways I could earn money working for myself. And mm -hmm. I tried a few things um, and a long way around, I came back to astrology, which I'd started studying as a hobby in my 20s. So. <laughs> Holy cow. Fantastic. There's probably a lot of holes in there, but. <laughs> Well, that's okay. It was very succinct. I'm pretty impressed, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so what drew you to astrology in the first place? I'd always been interested in it. Um, and even as a teenager, um, I've got some, um, some pieces of writing from when I was probably about 12, 13, writing out what sun signs mean. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, uh, anybody I knew, I would always know what their sun sign was, which is the most easy to figure out, of course. And and I'd read, you know, horoscopes in, in magazines. Um, but when I was um, a nanny in Connecticut um, and uh, one of my friends had taken astrology classes and she um, wrote out, she did my chart for me, did a written report, which I still have. And um, and I was hooked. I was like, wow, this kind of really just explains who I am and mm -hmm. gives me a deeper understanding of who I am. And she lent me some books and I, I taught myself to create charts because that was before computer programs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I hand calculated charts and practiced on anybody that would let me, um, along with doing the more formal study of my degree. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I just kept doing that for years, really. I kind of treated it as a hobby and um and it came and went and then finally when we moved to utah i became involved in a networking community because i was actually doing a i was a social media marketing manager for a while too. oh for goodness sake so was i <laughs> and but then i met all these people who were using kind of tools like hand analysis and stuff in in their work and i was like this is my passion, the astrology. It never really went away, even if I didn't look at books for months because of life stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just suddenly in 2012 decided I was going to be a professional astrologer. And I took more formal training and I've not looked back since. So there you go. <laughs> wow. Okay. Now you've also said, I'm, I want to dig into the traveling a bit. So you've also mm -hmm. said you've been to Australia. Mm -hmm. And then to Utah. So yeah. first of all, you know, what took you to those places? Was it self-motivation or a job or what was it? Well, I, my husband got laid off in, in the UK uh, from his corporate job. And, and we're both Sagittarius. So we're both quite adventurous. And, and we kind of sat and thought, well, what do we do now? He got a decent, you know, it wasn't a big tragedy because he got a decent layoff payment. And, um, we looked at Canada actually, mm -hmm. and the wait for a visa there for us, it was, I think, two, three years at the time. But I had family in Australia. So so we talked to uh, my uncle and they were willing to sponsor us. So we decided to emigrate lock, stock and barrel and go to Adelaide where my family lived. And um, so we got there intending to stay there forever. <laughs> but my job, my husband got a job there um, like a week after we got there and um 18 months later they announced they wanted to move us to utah so holy cow and so how different was the life between utah compared to oh. australia oh my goodness <laughs> so different um australia is very open very friendly um you know very sociable um and astrologically as well, yeah, um, there's a thing called astrolocality. My right. my moon line was right through Adelaide. I just fell in love with the place and adored it. And so it was a bit of a struggle to settle here, to be honest, because it's mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful place, but um, it's a strange culture to live in. <laughs> so I'm used to it now and, um, and I've made my life here, but it was difficult to settle, I will say. How long have you been in Utah? You Since say? 2008. Oh, okay, right. Because I know my husband's done quite a bit of work and travel to Utah, rather a lot Salt Lake City specifically. Yeah. And he always said, you got to come, you know, there's the mountains and the seasons and you'll just mm. love it. Um, but at that stage, we were still quite new to Canada. And I'm like, uh, right. I'm only just settling here. Uh, not ready to go again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And certainly with the whole green card thing and all the rest of it. So I was like, can we just stay here for a bit? Anyway, so here we are now. And he's changed jobs many times since then. Oh, so, yeah. So you just, could have moved here too. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Can you imagine <laughs> if we end up being neighbours? That would be hilarious. I know, really. Funny. <laughs> and we're US citizens now, you know. And, uh, yeah. 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 So tell me, how did you then get into the hypnotherapy and the shamanic path? Because that's also the path that I've taken. Also a trained hypnotherapist and now just finishing off my shamanic training. Well, it's kind of funny how things in your life come back isn't it really <laughs> you know when i when i was a nanny um in saskatchewan we lived right back right next to a native american reservation and i just and i had native american friends there and i went to the powwows and things and then when i moved to um, connecticut um i got into similar circles and i got I used to get invited to um sweat lodges like mm -hmm. real sweat lodges run by Native Americans, often on the reservations in Pennsylvania. And I had many magical, magical experiences. And when I moved back to the UK and, and did my degree, I did American studies with a, a specialization on Native American literature and, and, and such like. So I was always interested in that kind of shamanic kind of energy and culture and the connection with the um, imaginal, magical realms and 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 things and um and then i had a friend here when we moved to utah who had done shamanic training and um she would just core shamanism i don't know if you do core shamanism it's kind of run it's kind of a um uh, a shamanism that is takes all the core elements from all the sham shamanic cultures around the world Oh, okay. and, and teachers teaches their core elements like shamanic journeying is not just from native americans it's mm -hmm. from all shamanic cultures and and anyway she she had done um intensive training and, and kind of set up her own trainings and i did a year's training with her and i use it mostly i have a group um uh, you know a membership community and mm -hmm. i get people i get my clients um journeying to the planets and and doing soul retrieval i do group work more than um kind of shamanic healing per se so mm -hmm. yeah wow now and also <laughs> yeah I, I don't think this is too contentious to us but how does that work because within salt lake city there's quite a strong religious culture isn't there oh the, the, yeah the mormon or lds yeah. culture huge but there's also a, a very um, strong um, alternative, if you like, community as well, especially okay. in Salt Lake City. If you go out of the city, it's a bit less so. But, you know, we had one of the first um, prides in the in the US. Oh, really? I yeah. didn't realise. Hmm. Oh, yeah. So it, it's there's kind of a whole kind of subculture. <laughs> Very cool. Now, you're a bit of a fan of, well, I just sort of looked around on your website and saw that you've been involved in various different rallies and speaking and. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. what's that all about? Because that looked fun. Well, I'm, I'm quite interested in politics and I was um, in 2016. Uh, well, 2015, we became citizens. So it was going to be my first federal election because you can't vote in federal elections before. And I just love Bernie Sanders. I am a Bernie Sanders fan. And so I um, helped run Utah for Bernie Sanders and, and did all kind of rallies, got involved in a bit of an activist community. We did some rallies for the LBGTQ community and things. And I was a national delegate 
for Bernie Sanders in Philadelphia in the 2016 election. Oh, wow. Um, and I was actually in Philadelphia at the Democratic National Convention on the one year anniversary of becoming a citizen. So I don't know. I don't know how many people have done that when they've just become a citizen. <laughs> I was going to say, you jumped right in there with both feet. <laughs> I did. Yeah. But my work takes priority now i kind of let my work slide a bit for that election because i got very um, involved so <laughs> yeah so fun so what's with this new lifestyle this more alternative lifestyle that you now have as you say being a professional astrologer and coaching your group um what's the thing that you love most about it oh I always, well, I do, I am just immersed in astrology and I love, but I also love to use it to help people to really get a deep understanding of themselves, but also about, um, I'm kind of a modern astrologer. There's many forms of astrology and I see life as an evolutionary journey of growth and healing. And I, I love to use the tools that I've learned, primarily astrology, but then the shamanic work hypnotherapy um i trained as that but i don't use it quite so much but mm -hmm. i i love to help it for people to get deeply in touch with who they are and their strengths and their weaknesses and you can't control the planets but you can understand them and work with them rather than letting yourself be thrown around by um by you know life's um comings and goings so to speak <laughs> yeah feeling yeah. like you're in a human washing machine yeah yeah and so you know I did it through the podcast as well where you found me and I I kind of like to inspire people I'm not saying I'm perf perfect I'm very um real about who I am and mm. you know life gets to me sometimes too but I'm a great believer in um it's how we respond mm -hmm. to um you know, life's challenges is in how we grow. So, mm, Absolutely. So what yeah. are the biggest challenges that you have faced? Well, moving here was a huge one. I yeah. did, I, I, you know, I'll be honest, you know, we moved from a place I absolutely adored. We moved in August and winters here are quite harsh and, um, it's not as open and friendly a place. So I kind of fell into quite a bit of a depression for a while. Um, I'm kind of a feisty, um, independent woman as well. And, you know, the US government described me as a trailing spouse. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Excuse my language. <laughs> You might have to take that one. I'm have to delete that bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, so I, I'll admit, you know, that was a huge challenge to overcome to to kind of figure out how to settle and make the most out of a place. You know, my husband's career was going somewhere here, and um, and he was doing obviously what was um, he thought was best for our family. Because it turns out that if he hadn't left Adelaide, the job that he had there would have gone. <laughs> right. And he, basically, and he basically had the best job in his field in the city. So, <laughs> so we probably would have had to leave Adelaide anyway. Mm. So, so that was a journey. That was a big challenge. Um, but, you know, overall, I've uh, most of my challenges have been more internal kind of you know, uh, growth challenges, uh, obviously, you know, getting used to being um, a wife and a mother and, and all kinds of things like that and mm. dealing with changes. But generally, I've had quite a lucky life, I have to admit. Yeah. So, yeah. so how, and again, obviously focusing on the, the midlife part of it, how do you feel different now? Or what do you enjoy about being the age you are now? Oh, I just know myself so much better. You know, I'm just, I wouldn't go back. <laughs> no, nor would I. <laughs> you know, and, and there was nothing wrong with it then. But mm. I just feel so much more comfortable in myself and, and so much more um, able to 
I don't take things personally like I used to. I don't, you know, I, I know that the answers are within me for most things. I think that's something you realise as you uh, move past midlife and into uh, elderhood, really, because officially uh, age-wise astrology I'm now into my elderhood so <laughs> okay you become, you become more self-confident if you kind of do the work some people of course step into you know depression as they age but mm. but it's possible through um through working on yourself and a lot of self-care and self-love to really step into a place of confidence that you don't have when you're younger yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. one of the things that rings true with everybody that I've interviewed, but also, you know, I guess with the company I keep and the books I read and the self-care, as you say, it really comes true about how much less you're looking for external approval. Mm, yeah, totally. <laughs> so therefore you're not giving your yeah you're not giving your power away you find yeah. you can be more self-assured you can listen to your own intuition more yeah. I mean I think it's an absolute gift personally but me too the body might start to crumble a little bit but <laughs> but that's the self-care and getting rid of all the you know the the wounds as it were the you know and doing the healing over the years yeah. and preparing yourself for the fact that yes life happens but how yeah. resilient do you feel to cope with it all yeah. And resilience is a great one. You know, I think it's uh, I think astrology and, and other tools like astrology can help you learn resilience as well, because they kind of give you a bit of a guide for when you're going to have a challenging time coming up and a bit of guidance for how to kind of lean into it and mm -hmm. make the most of it, really, rather than, um, again, settle into a oh, what's life doing to me? <laughs> One of my big bugbears is, um, I think most people have heard of Mercury retrograde in astrology, if, mm -hmm. if they're online at all. And Mercury goes retrograde three, sometimes four times a year, and everybody moans about it. <laughs> and all planets go retrograde at some point, by the way. And, you know, there's a lesson in uh, Mercury retrograde is the most immediate that we feel because it's because uh, of how its orbit goes. Right. But, you know, right. I kind of think if you're going to go, oh, my God, Mercury retrograde's <laughs> coming and I'm going to have an awful time, then you're probably right. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of my attitude to life is. If you think you, you know, I think I can't remember who did the quote. If you think you can or you can't, you're right. You're probably right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't remember who did it either, but it's a, it's a pretty accurate quote. I think it was Henry Ford, actually. That's who springs to mind for me. So, yeah. yes, yeah. indeed. And even if he didn't say it, he certainly had a lot of credit for saying it. So, yeah. yeah. So it's, it seems to me um, that because we have, we are in such interesting times, interesting, she says, um, would you be happy to share with us a little bit about, you know, what is going on on a massive global scale? I mean, for example, in one of my really early introduction podcasts, I said, you are living with the age of Aquarius, whether you know what it is or not. Yeah. So yeah. can you tell us just a little bit about that? Because yeah, of course. You know, they've been talking about it since the 60s, you know, so what is it? Yeah, well, we have um, astrological ages um, based on what's called the precession of the zodiac. If anybody wants to read up about it, you can kind of search that precession. And, and ages move kind of backwards through the signs. So we're coming out of the age of Pisces. So like, you know, here we have Christianity, fishers of men. Pisces is the sign of the fishers, you know. And each sign, uh, and before that, we um, we were in, um, where were we before? Aries. And Taurus, um, age of Taurus was when people worship bulls and things like that, um, you know. So Taurus, how long do these ages go on for? Or does it yeah, depend on the planet? Ages, uh, no, astrological ages last um about 2500 years oh okay but, yeah <laughs> so you can look back you know from where we are now to just pre 
um, Christianity to to what was shifting then and how people you know were thinking there was a god out there and the answer was out there that was very much a a sign of christianity um there is no like kind of the age starts here there's yeah. much argument in the astrological community about when um <laughs> when the age of aquarius starts i it's think... not like a new year's eve no i think <laughs> We fade in and we fade out from the old age to the new age, which is why it's been going on since the 60s. Uh, there's some people think that the age of Aquarius started to come in with um, the age of industrialization because um, Aquarius is very much a more technical sign. Okay. Uh, but as we as the old age dies and the new age comes in, we get more of the new age. Okay. But the time of tran of transition between ages is usually a huge time of turmoil. And I kind of think we're in the kind of final birthing canal right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's certainly um, been some turmoil, that's for sure. Oh, yes, there has. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, politically, pandemic wise, of course, and, and people, you can see it within people if you look for it as well. People are changing their priorities, their values. You know, things like the tiny home movement, mm -hmm. um, going back to uh, more permaculture, things like that. People are just really starting to change. So, so what are the characteristics of the age of Aquarius? Well, we can only really guess, but... <laughs> as fair enough, age, yeah, fair enough. An age, but it's going to be huge advances in technology. I think that's going to be, um, you know... Um, a given and we've seen that already you know with ai a ai yeah um also you know just we see it with our technology the these mm -hmm. hand our computers that we have in our hands yeah you know um there's going to be ai whether that you know of course whether it'll be used for good or not we is it could be both <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like you know um there's going to be, but there's going to be huge developments. There's probably, it's an air sign, Aquarius, mm -hmm. despite being called the water bearer. Um, there's probably social distancing is a very big part of it, but also um, different ways of communicating. The internet is going to shift and change. Um, uh, the, what community is will change uh, there may be more because it's an air sign there may be more high rise kind of stuff as space comes but I think it will be in a more innovative way because Aquarius is a very innovative sign also mm -hmm. even like hydroponics like growing upwards could become a more um, uh, more prevalent um, so technology is definitely going to be a big part of it. And, uh, you know, green ecology, things mm -hmm. like that, um, green innovations to help us um, live more healthily on the planet. Right. Because the pan if we learn the, la the lessons of the pandemic, that is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and um, you know, it's a very humanitarian sign at its um, at its best. So. Mm -hmm. All of us astrologers are hoping that we move into a more humanitarian era, era where we um, help each other more um, collectively rather than focusing on just me, 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 which is uh, where we're coming from. So, And it's definitely it's the messages like that that have kept me so um, inspired, I guess, through COVID that you said this is kind of the nature of Aquarius, the age of Aquarius, and this is what's happening. And, and so yeah. to me, um, that I could only see that as a positive to say, well, surely this is a good thing. Yeah. You know, there is hope for humanity. <laughs> there is, and you know, every sign has its shadow, of course, but my kind of theory is that uh, the shadow shows up more when an age is dying. So what we're seeing is the, okay. the you know, what we're kind of seeing is the worst of the age of Pisces. The whole, you know, the whole two plus thousand years of the age of Pisces hasn't been horrible. Of course mm. it hasn't. Mm. <laughs> so, but we kind of, 
because you're in that shift and change it's this is my personal theory mm. that the the old age shows its worst and we're kind of seeing a lot of that as well so mm. interesting <laughs> and let's face it the period of change is always the most uncomfortable yeah because yeah. nobody knows what to expect and it's yeah. it just feels weird for everybody it does but you know aquarius is also more much more kind of of an egalitarian side uh, mm. side so I'm hoping that we kind of bring in new structures of governing, you know, that's less hierarchical. Uh, but it's also got the shadow of being an authoritarian sign. And of course, what one person sees as author authoritarian is is just doing good for the collective to another. So it all depends on your perspective too. So. Yeah. <laughs> now, one thing that I've heard you say on a couple of different podcasts, um, including your, your, your new one, which mm -hmm. I'll ask you to talk about at the end. Um, you said about this, how people refer to male and female energy. Mm -hmm. And you say you really don't like those terms because it's kind of, it, it's not accurate. Tell me more about that. Yeah. If you're well, happy to. Of course. I mean, and if anybody wants more on it, they can, get this book there we go <laughs> and i do talks on it so that's the complete guide to astrology but um yeah a lot of astrology and a lot of our world is based on polarities everything's black white everything's oppositional but you know um the book was i was asked to write it from a non-binary perspective it's not a political thing but it's just to speak to people where they're at and gender itself is not yes biologically there are males and females but gender's a spectrum even in our chromosomes and things you can have all kinds of mixes of chromosomes you know mm -hmm. and then there's uh, then there's intersex people as well you know everything isn't just totally masculine totally feminine or totally male totally female there's so many shades in between mm -hmm. and this could apply to all everything in the world really um and aquarius has the symbol of the two waves going together which is often thought to be um, water but i see it more as like energy waves mm -hmm. moving together and that it's all connected and even science kind of is coming to that now with all these, you know, quantum theories and wave theory of there's the wave mm. <laughs> and how, you know, um, a butterfly flaps its wings here and something happens in Borneo or, <laughs> or <laughs> wherever it's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Everything kind of has a knock on effect. Yeah. And I think it's important to move to realizing that it isn't all oppositional. And to look at the planets in astrology, this is the basis of the book. We we have male planets, we, and we've designated them male. The I was planets. going to say, how how are the planets yeah. male, and how are the planets female? Who decided that? Exactly the point of my book and the talks I do around it, you know, um, because that's how we perceived everything, as everything mm. was this male or this female in the English language, the words masculine and feminine have only been used since the 14th century. So, so oh. before that, so, you know, they're loaded terms. If you look at astrology or anything in life and say that's masculine, what does that mean? <laughs> you know? Yes. So I, um, a Aquarius as a sign is a kind of weird mix of, um, of honoring old and the traditions like mm -hmm. shamanic culture and innovative new and so i am i proposed using uh there's an old a very old astrological technique um from hellenistic times which is from ancient greece called astrology of sect then they used day and night for instead of masculine and feminine or male and female because mm -hmm. you can see that you know, night's more receptive, you know, if you're in the dark, you kind of have to feel your way around a bit. You kind of have to tune in when you're in the dark. And in the day, you know, it's more get out and do, it's more action oriented, what we've called male and night's what we've called female. So I just, um, I'm passionate about kind of changing the language we use, which mm -hmm. is all, 
which is all that we've used to describe our world. We've decided this is male, we've decided this is female, we've decided this is this and this is that. So it's changing the way you look and think about things. Mm. <laughs> I think that's fascinating. And because both of those terms are loaded, as you say, when you put the terminology of day and night on it, it allows you to come with very different ideas, different preconceptions, um, and maybe actually it allows us to expand yeah. our description. Yeah, and it enables us to look at how we have, uh, as, as humans have approached our world. You know, we've emphasised day or very male energy over... Um, night or female energy to the point of even trying to block out the dark with all our street lights and yeah um, and things and without the dog you can't see the stars so you know <laughs> and that would be a great loss to everybody wouldn't it yeah, yeah seriously because it's magical yeah so i see it as a very shamanic in concept the things mm -hmm. i'm trying to propose they're not always easy to really put into words other terms I proposed in my book were using seeing the whole universe as a breath because it does everything, but it's based on cycles and things mm -hmm. like the waves going in and out. So the seasons, yeah, the seasons. So inhale and exhale is another mm -hmm. way of looking at everything. You know, we inhale to get out and go and do something, and then we exhale to go and relax. So, mm -hmm. um. I think I'm bringing my shamanic work into it, into it in that way as well. So, I think, it's, and this is going from experience as well, because I've been coaching for about 16 years and it started off with fitness coaching and then moved into um, NLP coaching and now moving far more into the energy. And I think once you start learning a new mo modality, you can't help but intertwine it all in what you already know, because it's almost as if, well, this is the foundation of what I know. Yeah. And then I'm bringing in all of this and the new information so often answers questions that it when does. you work with one modality for a long time, you're sort of like, yeah, I like it, but there, yeah. there are some holes in that, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so the new modalities come in and they fill in those holes and they allow you to grow with yeah. what you know, what you offer and how you help people. And also, you know, you look back on your life and, and add and start adding all your experiences in as you uh, start to develop a new kind of consciousness you go mm. oh, well actually that's why I did that when I was 21 <laughs> yeah looking back and going oh now it all fits it all makes sense now and that's the alchemy of it isn't it yeah mm -hmm. I see I see our lives as kind of an alchemical part of creation really which is why one of my favorite tools that I get clients working with is um i don't know if you've heard of the artist way most people have by yeah. now yeah so for those that don't know the artist way is um uh, is a book by julia cameron and she did it for mostly for creatives but it's for about creating your life really it's kind of a 12-step program for life <laughs> and i do it through the ast lens of astrology i i help i i do it myself and mm -hmm on and off and I go back to it and I get clients doing it and and I see it as mixing in all the elements of your life especially as you grow older and evolve to kind of create the life you want so mm. yeah yes I I tell you what, I really talking about creating the life you want I really want to um offer retreats adventure retreats for women because they're so transformational and that's bringing in all of my past sort of fitness and athletic mm -hmm. adventures um that past and then in with the shamanic and the healing and combining yeah. it all together anyway so just as i had all of that first one planned and ready to go and just booking and it me. anyway <laughs> everything <laughs> anyway so i took that as a uh, as a reason that i obviously needed to do more to open this stuff up and then yeah. it will come in the future yeah so one of the things I find interesting about now is changing the energy of competition to collaboration. Mm. And so in that light, have there been any key people who have really helped you on your path? Oh, goodness. So many. 
Um, one of the main ones is, um, well, my husband's been a great one. He's always a great support. But Maridel Bowes was my main astrology teacher. Mm -hmm. And funnily enough, we met when I was doing the social media marketing coaching and I coached her on social media. <laughs> and then when Funny. I decided to become a professional astrologer, I asked her who could who I could study under and she was like how about me because <laughs> she actually had got a course that she'd been running for years mm -hmm. so um she's been amazing but um you know then there's some public kind of figures um and they're mostly kind of creative ones but i love people like Brene brown and um elizabeth gilbert um mm -hmm. and and some podcasters they're mostly very real people though um yeah. you know I'm not kind of a, a starstruck people. I like people who are very honest, very um, authentic, very vulnerable. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. There's so many probably over the years. There's, there's the person yeah, yeah. that introduced me to astrology when I was 29, who did my chart, my friend Karen. <laughs> so. My friend Karen, <laughs> she's been my greatest support. <laughs> <laughs> this book, my second book was the, the Complete Guide to Astrology was dedicated to her, the first one to Maradell, so... Oh, that's mostly fantastic. Women. Mostly women. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I, I wonder how much, because since we moved to Canada, one of my main, um, I guess, ways to settle in was to start doing networking with business networking. And so over the years, that has grown such a large community of women. Yeah. Because so many of them are exactly like us that you have you have your children you know that you've got a different priority than you did have when you you know started your career yeah. and so it tends to be that a lot of the networking groups are made up of women yeah which has been fantastic in the sense that there is so much support for each other yeah um yeah. And, and i'm wondering do you see that as one of the paths of how we're moving forward or um i think it's going to be more online networking Fair enough. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. just because, because of the distancing yeah and and because of the lessons learned from the pandemic and things like that yeah see my yeah. experience of in-person networking was less than positive here in um in utah because mm -hmm. of the, the culture so it depends on your culture mine is both most an aquarius is connected with the internet so i kind of think it's going to be more of that I forgot um, to mention one of my other big influences is Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I got to... Do you know what? I was surprised you left him out, actually, because I was waiting for you to say him. I was like, how could I not say my Bernie, my granddad? <laughs> I have so many Bernie Sanders T-shirts. I've got a bobblehead coming this um, this month from um, the inauguration of Joe Biden, where he wore his big mittens. So. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So what is um, one of the questions I often ask people is you've had so many adventures and you've got to where you are now. What's still on the horizon that you want to do? Um, I, my, my membership community and uh, my work has, has just shifted recently. Um, the pl In what way? It's, a bit, it's, it's kind of a bit technical, but... Um, the aspects to my own astrology have, uh, and, and my age, just aging, I think, and, and moving further into this elderhood energy, have brought my focus more into um, connection and and love, in, not in like kind of the romantic, the deeper sense of love mm -hmm. and, and such like. So I've started to work with Venus, uh, the planet Venus, more and more because she's actually astrologically kind of the higher incarnation of Earth. And she's her cycle is so very human. So I started working with Venus in 2017. Uh, she goes retrograde every 19 months. And I did I had a dream saying you're going to do a Venus retrograde class. So I did. Um, but since then, I've discovered there's all this deep work with Venus and I've discovered hidden depths that I didn't understand about Venus. I've discovered more personally. I've discovered work that other people are doing with it. So I renamed my uh, membership community Venus Enchantment. Um, I, I'm very, um, whatever you call it, intuitive or 
Um, I pay attention to what's coming my way, um, you know, and messages. And I dream a lot of these things. And my work is just deepening with Venus. I'm actually becoming certified with um, what's called Venus star point work. The Venus star point is a five pointed star. So it's mm -hmm. the head, the hands, the feet. Uh, it's 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 very deep work and and i would i just want to expand the membership community and and work with people through helping them to work deep in at a deeper level with venus mm -hmm. so that's the main focus yeah. so what will be the benefit to people if they can work deeper with venus how is that different from doing any other sort of self healing work um, I think all healing, self -healing Asking work. for a friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, the primary um, focus is a lot on self, um, self care and self love. And, you know, over my own life and work with astrology, I've discovered particularly women, and I do have a couple of wonderful men in the community too, but we don't focus on loving ourselves first. We mm. just don't you know <laughs> and um and if i can help you do that through understanding the venus in your own energy and how that works and the shadow of it and things like and working with the venus cycle which is um an amazing cycle to work with it helps people to to reach that point of self understanding self care self love self acceptance so mm -hmm. So what are the, um, what are the, so have you got some examples of, let's say, current or maybe past clients of the sort of changes they've been able to make because mm -hmm. they then had an understanding of where they fitted in or how they, you know, their astrological charts? Yeah, well, I mean, one of them is, is she's a, a friend now. She took one of my Venus retrograde classes and... Um, she just changed her whole career <laughs> and she actually became an astrologer too. Mm -hmm. but it was all kind of in her chart and she's never looked back and she's happier and she was uh, venus is um venus represents so much it represents kind of abundance it's kind of the law of attraction planet too in at a very deep sense not the um not that just I am I say I want a red bicycle and it's there in the morning. <laughs> but she's you know, she's um, you know, created a six figure um, astrological business through working with her Venus. So <laughs> it's like Wow, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, so how can people find you and also wave your book about again so we can see your book. But then for the audio obviously, so it's the complete guide to astrology. And it's in case you're listening to this rather than looking at it, it's a white cover with the moon, black moon signs down the middle and how would I do it? Constellation. Thank you. I couldn't think of that yeah. word. And yeah. Constellation. <laughs> so if you go. The moon phases. The moon phases. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So we've talked about um, that now. So anybody on Spotify can tune in and yeah. know that they've got the right one if they go onto Amazon. And it's it's um, on Amazon. It's also on indie book sites and uh, may, all major booksellers. And it's in most bookstores as well, to be honest, which always mm -hmm. kind of tickles me. People send me photographs of it. <laughs> they go, oh, look what I saw in them. <laughs> Fantastic. So you've got your new Venus community. So tell us just a little bit. Why would people join that? Um, they, they want, well, it's a community for a start. I always think kind of working together in a community is more helpful. Mm -hmm. I give, um, I, I do monthly calls, um, when the, each Venus has phases, I'm not going to technically explain it, but I do monthly calls for that. And people get to ask questions about their own chart. I also do, um, daily, um, well, five days a week, not seven, mm -hmm. um, energy updates, um, in the membership community, you know, they get a lot of input. I do some tarot card pulling. I do a lot of shamanic journey work to help mm -hmm. them tune in. I kind of throw everything I do <laughs> at my members and, um, you know, they have to kind of show up and ask questions if they want me to work on, on their own stuff, but they also get a huge discount off astrology consultations 
mm-hmm. with me mm-hmm. if they want to do have some one-on-one sessions. And it's just my preferred way of working with people. I'd rather work on an ongoing basis because whilst I love doing astrology consultations and, you know, I get huge magical testimonials from people, um, I think it's often like it leaves people with, okay, well, what do I do now? (laughs) Yeah, and that's fair enough. Because I think, I mean, for example, um, I have worked with a local astrologer who I've loved and she's opened up so many new options and ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, She's been fantastic. Anyway, so I said to my husband, you've got to go and see her, you've got to go and see her. (laughs) And then, so he went to see her and he said, oh, she said all of this stuff, which was, you know, fantastic. And -hmm. then he said, what do I do with it now? I went, I don't know. Because I just trust it's all going to unfold. But he doesn't have that same... Um, idea that oh well now we'll just let it all unfold but I feel yeah. reassured that it'll all unfold yeah in, as it as it should yeah but some people want some more ongoing support yeah so, so that's why I still do consultations of course they're you know what the backbone of most astrologers practice but um but some people just want the community support and the encouragement to keep working with it every mm. month and tune in so Fair yeah. enough. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so what is your uh, what's your social media and stuff so people can find oh, yeah. you if they want to follow on? Oh my website. <laughs> Come on, Louise, get on it. <laughs> my, my website is my name, louiseeddington.com, L O U I S E E D I N G T O N dot com. Most people put two D's, so it's one D. And yeah, I started with two D's and then yeah. went, nah, that's not right. Yeah. And and my business name is Cosmic Owl Astrology. Hence, uh, for those on video, I have an owl behind me. Sometimes I have a green screen with an owl behind me. Um, the owl is my um, spirit animal, I guess. Um, and um, but anyway, you can find me on um, Instagram, Cosmic Owl Astrology. Facebook, Cosmic Owl Astrology. I have a free Facebook group, uh, group called Cosmic Owl Astrology Cafe. Um, YouTube, Cosmic Owl Astrology, mm. Twitter's the only one I don't really do. So. I was going to say, which of them do you most like to interact on? Because everybody like, really has a favourite. I like Facebook most. Yeah, you see, we're that generation. Everybody <laughs> says it's dumb. Well, yeah, but my, both my kids use Facebook a fair bit. But um, I'm trying to explore TikTok. I, have, I don't Ooh, know. Oh, you're I'm brave. Trying. Well, a lot of my friends are moving to TikTok because they get fed up of Facebook's censorship and, mm. and you know, um, its algorithm saying if you use this word, you're going to get a three day ban, which I've had in the past. <laughs> oh, really? But it can be unwittingly, you know. Yeah. I saw somebody had described themselves as white trash the other day and they got a threat of a three day ban because they weren't calling anybody else yeah, yeah. white trash. <laughs> And um, and we, I understand it's algorithms, but um, mm-hmm. but you know, I'm try, I try to expand and explore the others. But I must okay. admit, Facebook's still my favourite. <laughs> Facebook's your one. Okay, fair enough. Cool. Yeah. So and also, um, what else? So we've talked about, and you you're going to start a new podcast because the podcast that I actually found you on um, just came to a close. But you are carrying on on your own, aren't you? So what's that one called? Oh. Well, I did Weirdly Magical with my friend Jen Duchenne for three years, but she's moving um, out of the country and it was just starting to feel like time for me to do something different. So i am actually kind of moved it to Weirdly Cosmic and I'm doing that one on my own. So it can be found at all podcast providers, iTunes, Spotify, all those ones. I'm actually doing it on anchor.fm which is a great podcast provider. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So um, I guess it, because we're looking at time now, I just want to say thank you so much for, thank you. well, for sharing your story and for sharing all of your, well, not all of your tools, because you've got a gazillion of them, but sharing some of your tools. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. It's been lovely to getting to know you a little bit more. Um, yeah. As I said at the beginning, I feel like we go back so long because you've kept me going all the way through COVID, which I'm so grateful for. 
<laughs> and now we're connected on Facebook. So. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. now I feel like, you know, I feel like I actually know you a bit more and you've had a chat with me and it's awesome. So thank you again. Huge gratitude to you, Louise. I appreciate oh, it very much. Thank you for inviting me. It's been fun. Excellent. <laughs> So just left to say, please take a look at all Louise's um, book and group and Facebook and website. And if you've liked this podcast and you've liked what you've heard, please um, subscribe, share it with your friends. Um, and if there is, if you would like to know any more about the work that I do, please come over to find me at Facebook at Soulful Adventure or Lindsay DeSwart and my website soulfuladventureliving.com and you can find out more about the work that I do there and apart from that I will close by saying thank you and bye for today and I will see you on next week's episode take care bye bye everybody